Hello, so today I would like to introduce um, uh, a, d a discussion, telling the truth, not really the usual lesson, although I will be speaking hopefully <laughs> for a very long time as I'm used to do. Um, that is, you know, a debate essentially because we're talking about a time in history that um, about which we know really very few M in terms of sources we 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 can't really we there are a few sources the ones that we have are difficult uh, to understand um, archaeology can answer certain questions but up to a certain point um, and it's a topic that is really debated also for um I would say it's been debated for ideological reasons in the past m in the old historiography. Um, and it's still being debated today, um, if, if anything, because it's always positive to exercise your critical skills on a topic that uh, remains um, ambiguous and that can maybe uh, be relatively enlightened or at least seen from a different perspective uh, uh, under the light of, of new of new knowledge or simply uh, a different mindset like the one we have now compared to, I don't know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Um, and I would like to talk about the what is called the um, Justinian's illusion. Um, that is basically this um, idea that actually uh, is framed in a much broader picture than just um, Justinian's mind wha indeed was um, a great mind on his own, especially from a uh, legislative point of view. Um, we are talking about um, uh, one of the mm, golden ages, at least on the surface of of of, uh, of uh, Byzantine history, or, or as it would be proper to say um, at this time, Roman history. Mm -hmm. But we'll be calling them Byzantines, uh, just for you know, may being more precise, for, at least for a temporal point of view, for, but for nothing else, because really, what is Roman is very difficult to understand. Um, uh, in theory, let's figure in, in, in out in practice how difficult it can be. And I'm talking about the illusion that was inherent to the asset. I mean, we, we don't really know um, whether it was an illusion or not, and this is what I will be discussing uh, in detail, or at least in, in detail compared to you know, wh what I have in mind relatively to, to, to how to approach these problems. Um, to the relatively to the organization that um, was given to uh, the imperial dominions um, in the time of Justinian. And I'm talking especially about the great um, uh, Justinian's reconquest, especially of uh, the um, Western Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, Justinian uh, is recalled if, um, besides his great um, legal uh, legal uh, work, um, the the known uh, known as the Corpus Juris Civilis that he wrote to reorganize essentially. Also, in, in 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 a pattern that had to probably comprehend and include this new um, territorial asset that he gave to the empire through these conquests. Uh, he's also famous for these conquests, in fact. Um, um, and we're talking specifically about Vandal Africa that was conquered. Um, when we talk about Africa at this time, we should mm, think of. Um, today's um, modern Tunisia and, and, and parts of the Libyan coast, um, Ostrogothic Italy, that comprehended uh, um, substantially the, the modern uh, Italian territory plus uh, other lands, especially in the, in, in the northeast, in Oricum and in Pannonia, and also parts, as far as we know, of, southern, uh, of the southern Iberian Peninsula, uh, especially in the most, um, in the wealthiest and most uh, urbanized areas of the peninsula, were along the, the, the southern coast in modern um, Andalusia in Spain. Um, and this was a very big uh, enterprise. Uh, there were lots of wars, the, the most important being fought uh, in Italy. Um, 
a, a war that eventually uh, went really wrong, went, went seriously wrong, but at a certain point the Byzantines had defeated the Ostrogoths, but the, they, they took uh, the, 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 the mobile army back um, on other uh, strategical theaters, and the Ostrogoths uh, that had remained in the north of the peninsula um, basically reconquered the wall, uh, if not the wall peninsula, at least many important territories, and the war um, broke out again, and were other fights, and, and, and all of the terrible, um, the ca terrible consequences that really shook um, at its roots the uh, Romano-Italic uh, social asset, and that wouldn't make Italy um, uh, being the same uh, anymore from pre-war uh, period. And um, and also the other wars that were fought were substantially aimed uh, to recover um, these lands that, as we've seen, Africa, Italy, Spain, that were the wealthiest, um, traditionally speaking, of the Western, of the Western Mediterranean, were those areas in which um, the late Roman society had remained uh, substantially, uh, substantially untouched. I mean, you can, you know, obviously go deep into saying, well, you know, the Ostrogoths did change Italy in some way, or at least Italy, Ostrogothic Italy was somehow different from the one at the time of the fall of the Roman Empire. You can argue that the Vandals um, had organized Africa in, in certain ways, and that the Iberian Peninsula had mm, resented of wars and of the various peoples passing through it, but generally speaking historians are agree commonly on the fact that um, that late um, Roman society had survived at least in the essentials and in, in, in its social structures um, in terms of administration and even in partly in uh, uh, in, 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 in culture, I mean the elites were still there, that was an idea of even of coming back into the imperial lands in, in some measure, and that had been reason, by the way, why there had been such a fierce war, um, especially in Italy, because there were the Roman senators that, in spite of um, um, you know cooperating with the Ostrogothic rulers, who instead mm, you know by managing the administration, well, the Ostrogoths would would um, uh, would have the military uh, um, duties into into the, the kingdom uh, had had however a always aimed to come back into the Roman world and being still part of the imperial lands. Um, Italy in particular had been conquered by the Ostrogoths um, because the Ostrogoths had been sent by the same Constantinople to recover Italy um, in its name, so in the Roman name. Then factually, Italy had remained, um, had become a, a, a new Romano-Germanic kingdom, like others, and and in spite of relatively relatively good relationships with Constantinople, who told them what to do, and then you know the, the king Theodoric would more or less uh, you know be uh, if not really a good friend, but at least not even a bad enemy of the empire. Um, in fact, he was, you know, m carrying out uh, autonomous policies on his own, especially in the Western Mediterranean. At a certain point, in Ostrogothic Italy has a um, is able to to make of Visigothic Spain a sort of client kingdom, or at least a sort of um, you know unique uh, block against the, the 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 Franks of Clovis in, in Gaul. So a very interesting dialectics uh, in which also the Vandals played a part. The Vandals had come essentially not invited by the Romans, definitely. But even in, in Vandal Africa, you know, the, the large senatorial estates were still there. Um, Vandalic uh, domination has been widely um, re re-evaluated in, in positive terms, considering that most of the negative judgments that we, we, we gave to the Vandals, even t to make us mm, entering to our vocabulary the, the, the term Vandal as a synonym of, of thug and of, um, of a violent, ruthless person, were, weren't that bad. And, uh, and, and much of the reason why they were 
um, um, were so mistreated, historiographically speaking, wasn't even for the fact that they had invaded Roman lands or even um, uh, pillaged Rome at a certain point, but rather because they were Arians. That means that they were heretics, that the Catholic Church, in fact, was the one that in the West was writing history, at least because uh, it had the, the intellectual means to do so, depicted these guys as evil monsters, and it, they, they weren't, the Vandals weren't the only victims of this historiography. And, and this is a bit valid, by the way, for all historiography at that time. At the beginning of the video, I was pointing out how the sources we have are very mm, scanty, and the ones we have are so pu very ideological in many ways. I mean, especially the Byzantine sources, so the, the, the broader pool that we have for that time in Europe, um, they are essentially court works. I mean, they, they are conceived always in terms to be either uh, in, um, in negative or positive terms, but are always referred to mm, the, the, the court, the emperor, and, and his family, and making gossip sometimes, or um, venerating, uh, on the contrary, in order to idealize, um, in, in, a tra in a historiographical tradition that was really meant to be uh, very, uh, very subjective, uh, absolutely not realistic, and that sheds an, um, a very few light on the rest of of the world and, and the same the same empire uh, to a certain extent. So it's very difficult to evaluate what happened in history at that time in the Mediterranean to the empire in the Romano-Germanic world, um, and um, and therefore think that, for instance, about um, the um, the Byzantine re um, reconquista, let's say of of, of southern Iberian lands, um, we actually don't even know when this really happened. People say this happened somewhere in between the conquest of Africa and the conquest of Italy. Some people say it happened after the conquest of Italy. I, I mean, w for, for, certain s mm, for such a major event, uh, yeah, nothing incredible because it's not that the Byzantines reconquered all of Spain, it, they reconquered only a a tiny stripe of land that was, however, the, the, the wealthiest one. But we, we don't even know when this happened, so that gives you perhaps, uh, that's a good example to give a dimension how blind we are and how ignorant we are about that, that period in history. Um, and there is a lot of debate because essentially the, um, the Byzantine Empire, or the Eastern Roman Empire, as you want to call it, um, spent a lot of resources for the reconquest of, 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 of the Western Mediterranean. Uh, the first thing is, uh, is wondering, but was it worth it at the time? Um, and this is something that is criticized especially, and I don't think that it is good, because mm, mm, that's really the problem, in my opinion, before, that other events took place and would shatter essentially this system and to make it crumble again. Uh, Italy was conquered by the Longobards. Um, the, 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 um, the, the, the Iberian lands were substantially, um, you know, by name Byzantine, but th 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 they gave really a few things. Then the Arabs came and even Byzantine Africa was wiped out. Um, by the Muslims, so, um, you know, was it really worth, was it really worth for Justinian to invest so many um, economical and military resources of the empire for the reconquest of the West? Other people say, well, he should have, you know, invaded the East and taken out the, 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 the Persians that were this major threat since uh, at least uh, three centuries from the time the Sassanids had r risen after the Arsacids and had become very aggressive. Um, and indeed, the Persian problem was, was always there and uh, the Romans couldn't, 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 um, couldn't forget about it. So, uh, the question for today, for today's historians is, was it really uh, worth it? And especially, how did these um, decisions would actually mm, 
would actually take place? I mean, was there really a strategical thinking at that time that would tell you, yeah, on, on the medium um, term, conquering these lands will will probably benefit us in some measure? I think so, personally speaking, but I would like to add something more before talking about that. Because, um, you see, the, the Justinian Empire and this um, these reconquest that he had carried out um, basically crumbled at a certain point, as we've seen, um, especially under the push of these uh, nomadic or semi-nomadic peoples that uh, um, that hadn't uh, um, hadn't yet stopped to 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 move across U Eurasia and even uh, and even other uh, African uh, areas. Um, and um, and it wouldn't be over for a long time because the Byzantine Empire, tr basically throughout the world early Middle Ages, would be constantly under siege. People say, "Oh well, but the Byzantines didn't have the strength to reconquer anything afterwards. You know, they they they, they were bad." So on. well, yeah, because you forget that <laughs> they had to face like a, a continuous shower of of peoples, one worse than the other, that tried to conquer Constantinople. Uh, a siege after siege, and, and the empire was busy doing that, and in the process sheltering the whole European uh, continent, while the Latin Germanic uh, people in, in the West were basically doing nothing, or at least they had very weak um, political uh, structures that, or and military structures that could barely contain certain uh, the few peoples that actually came. From fr in that direction, at least, um, and 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 therefore I it's been said that um, in the face of these major events, uh, Justinian was a sort of optimistic um, thinker because he um, he he probably I don't know we we have objectively to to take this into consideration as an option because when we talk about Justinian we're to we're not talking about you know our neighbor in back in the yard that is cutting grass um, uh, we're talking about the freaking Roman emperor I mean a guy who literally thought that he was the leader of the world that he was the chief of the world uh, Christianity on earth and that God had chosen him to rule the world and therefore maybe he wasn't that um, you know uh, usual in, in the way of thinking but at the same time I, I think we shouldn't even think that he was an idiot or um, uh, or a sort of uh, uh, mega mega maniacal e egoist that, that the thought that, that the world should fall at his uh, feet um, uh, just because um, he was the Roman Emperor. He actually also had ro um, rose into power um, in very troubled events, so um, even if that might have actually strengthened his uh, confidence in himself, he knew how politics really worked and, and he surely was no uh, uh, whining baby who wanted just you know, Italy and Africa and Spain back for, for no reason. Um, and uh, however, m historians have um, evidenced uh, at least two major mistakes in, in the, um, at least among others that, that occurred, including you know the poor, um, the very poor ma management of the um, of the Italian uh, campaigns, uh, at least in later times, because we have seen w w the mess that happened in Italy with the Ostrogoths, but relatively to the before, so the, the planning phase, um, many people have argued that actually the Vandals in Africa and the Ostrogoths in Italy um, had had uh, a sort of positive role in the general political uh, balance of, of, uh, of the Mediterranean. Uh, the Vandals especially have been seen as, uh, as a kingdom that at that time was already declining it wasn't such a big kingdom. The, the major power they had had was that they had first of all been extremely lucky because when the Vandals arrived there, especially thanks to their king uh, Geyseric, uh, they had managed to sink uh, the whole uh, Byzantine fleet in, in front of Tunis and um, they 
um, that they had resisted, especially thanks always to Geyserich, he was an, a, a great, great king um, in, in, in Germanic history uh, and then the mig migration era, they had managed to, to stand against the empire um, and eventually to expand even into uh, Sicily and Sardinia and when the Ostrogoths arrived in Italy, uh, Theodoric told the Vandals, look guys, now Sicily comes back <laughs> Uh, to us, um, and they were good enough to say okay. So that tells you that maybe you know it's not that the Ostrogoths with this huge power, so probably the, the Vandals at that time uh, weren't uh, that great thing either. Either and and if you really look at the map of the Vandal Kingdom, it was so it wasn't so big. Let's say that the real core of power and of wealth was concentrated in this area of Tunisia that is broadly large as I don't know what. It was like Sicily and consider that the most of it was um, you know you are in Africa so basically when you go inland uh, I mean on the coast coast there are quite fertile lands in that area but to go as soon as you go deep into the, the, the interland there is desert and by the way there are mm, populations there inhabitants that um, are not even sedentary we're talking about the Berbers so peoples that uh, traditionally even in the Roman uh, the peak of the Roman Empire had remained free uh, theoretically obedient to the Romans but the Romans had never gone there to, to kick their ass at least in, uh, in, in, in only in particularly um, uh, emergential uh, situation in which that they had to to show up off and make a bit of deterrence um, but I it's been told However, that these Berbers were quite of a problem, and that the Vandals, as such, being a modest power, could be um, could become a sort of client state of the Byzantine Empire without the need of fighting a freaking war in there. Uh, that was quite easy to be won. Telling the truth, the Vandal Kingdom fell down quite easily when when um, when Belisarius, uh, famous uh, prominent general the time of Justinian was was sent there to defeat them. But the problem with Africa is that um, uh, yeah, the Vandals had been taken out, but at that point the Byzantines had to, um, to, to control it, so they had to put resources in defending that territory. And as we have said, the uh, the the border between uh, you know the Africa and the interland was pretty um, pretty non-existent because it was open wasteland and and these Berber peoples would come to to raid to make incursions and therefore the Byzantines had to pay to to garrison there to have some forces and and even from Africa at a certain time to were revolts. Um, after the Byzantine conquest against the same Constantinople fr from the Byzantines themselves, with Byzantine officers and, and army that was stationed there, uh, even the famous emperor, emperor Heraclius uh, basically came to power at the end of um, the, 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 if I'm not wrong, at the very end of the 6th century, um, rising from, from Africa and then taking power into Constantinople. Mm, so people have started to say, well, but strategically speaking, would have been, wouldn't have it been better to keep the Vandals there as a sort of client state? Since they were weak, they hadn't this great demographical strength, they were declining, politically speaking. I mean, ju let's, let's just leave them there, let's trade with them, maybe let's force them to, 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 to our... Uh, let's send an army there and let's make them bow to our power and make them effectively client a client kingdom. But let's not invade Africa proper and let's just make the Vandals trading with us. The main problem there was that the Vandals had um, um, one of the most productive um, lands in terms of, of grain, of wheat. Um, that fed largely uh, that had fed largely uh, Italy since the Roman times. So maybe the Byzantines didn't want the Vandals to do so. But at the same time, uh, it was not in the Vandal interest to 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 play against the Byzantines in a moment in which they had the Byzantines had regained so much power on the sea and they could be assaulted from a moment to another. So. Um, the 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 um, food resources of Africa could have been um, secured simply by letting the Vandals down. 
uh, and uh, sub sub subservient to the empire. Relatively to Ostrogothic Italy, hmm, it's difficult to say because um, was Ostrogothic could Ostrogothic Italy be used um, I in that fashion? You know, I've heard people criticizing the the Ostrogothic, um, you know, the, the the Italian campaign of Belisarius by saying, well, but the Ostrogoths could remain there ma and, and being a sort of of um, uh, of sh of shield uh, for the empire against the Franks, against the Longobards, eventually. Hmm. I don't know about that. I think the Ostrogoths had um, a great power on their own, um, at least compared to the times. Um, because, as we've said before, yeah, they weren't these huge powers, but they weren't that weak uh, either. They definitely had a lot of resources, um, especially in this Italy that was still productive, that still had senatorial estates. The real problem of the Ostrogoths was, however, as we said before, the problem they had a senatorial class, a Roman senatorial aristocracy still basically administrating the uh, local um, the local estates for them, obviously, so they, they, they benefited from it. But at the same time, mm, you know, these senators would always look at Constantinople, hoping to come back into the empire and 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 enjoy all the benefits that their senatorial status would um, would imply uh, in that system. So uh, we can't really say whether Ostrogothic Italy was um, was even meant to survive for a long time with that um, uh, spine in, 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 the, the, in, in the rear of these senatorial uh, senators that could always backstab the Ostrogoths and, and, and asking Constantinople for help. And this is basically what happened. The, the Byzantines officially went into, uh, into, um, into Italy because they had been called uh, Telling the truth, not by the senators. The senators obviously probably had always asked the, the, the Romans to come back in Italy, um, but rather um, to because the, um, the 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 daughter of Theodore, King Theodoric that had died, uh, asked them to save them from the the other um, the the king that had. Uh, come uh, on the throne after his father, and she was killed, in fact. Um, and um, and uh, and naturally, there, there was this, in, you know, in, in, in political instability in Ostrogothic Italy that that probably reflected these tensions and these problems. So. Um, the idea of wiping out the Ostrogoths wasn't that bad. First of all, you have to think that in Italy there was Rome. And the first thing a Roman emperor has to do <laughs> is to recall Rome. Which seems really an excuse, a symbolism, because what's Rome worth at that point? Well, f for mm, an imperial mindset it was really worthy. But even Italy was worth it to be reconquered, you know, it, it, it actually had a lot of resources, it was in a very important strategical situation, it had in the north this alpine area that could really function as a barrier against the Franks and other peoples, and I'd say that the objective of conquering uh, Italy was probably um, really um, was really a good choice. I mean, it, it was concretely a Byzantine objective to be accomplished, strategically speaking. The problem with that is that, um, as I said before, uh, the, the Byzantines even made it to conquer Italy in the first campaign. They made it. Uh, they had de defeated the Ostrogoths. Uh, they, they had secured more or less the whole area. At a certain point Constantinople says, no, we need the army to go somewhere else, let's take it out. Uh, there is a lot of debate also in this. People say that Justinian was quite jealous of Belisarius that uh, had managed to, to, to conquer Italy and to have a lot of resources in his hands, so he was, he was deprived of, of these military uh, power by the emperor, and this produced the mess that we n we know the most in, in for for what it happened to 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 Italy and the distractions that took place there. That a few Ostrogoths that had sur survived um, made 
uh, they're coming back and they reconquered broad parts of Italy. They adopted a wholly different strategy from the one that they had adopted at the beginning. At the beginning they had thought to face the Byzantines in open field, in sieges and in, in even in maritime warfare in which the Byzantines were masters. At this time instead the Ostrogothic king Totila made um, a wasteland strategy um, he um, he made ambushes. Um, it was an attrition war, and it destroyed Italy into the process. I mean, from the Ostrogothic uh, perspective, Totila is definitely a heroic and romantic figure. But let's be honest about it: uh, Italy went destroyed in the process. Um, so the the real point, in my opinion, is that um, if um, and eventually the Byzantines won in, in the end but uh, at a huge price considering you know that what they had fought for was Italy and Italy was destroyed so at that point yeah it was not worth it but before invading Italy in the first place that was a good idea and if the Byzantines had managed to keep the peninsula well garrisoned and securing uh, you know the, the at the region uh, from the, the the last burning ashes of Ostrogothic presence, probably they would have saved a lot of strategic um, resources, and that which might have been used to 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 strengthen even the same Italy from a military point of view at uh, at the point of maybe b being capable of defending um, the peninsula from the Longobards that would have arrived. He said what arrived at the end of uh, in the 60s of the, of the 6th century was that Longbirds entered Italy without even finding a Byzantine army um, garrison in it. And there is a lot of debate there too because we don't really know how that happened. Um, there is um, a version that tells us that basically it was the same Byzantines who had called the Longbirds into northern Italy to use them, and this is interesting, uh, as um, um, as um, um, as a um, as a shield against the Franks that were quite on the rise from the northwest in Gaul, and instead uh, the Longobards basically um, couldn't be controlled because they were they 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 were too strong than what the Byzantines have thought and they were um, capable even of rebelling to the Byzantines and taking large parts of the Italian peninsula. Um, and even though we don't know exactly what happened, I am really prone to think that it, it, it's the most likely uh, situation. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that it, it is not possible that the Byzantines had um, hope to keep the Longobards out, but it's obvious that you have, if you have a people like that, it was quite close to Italy at the time the Byzantines reconquered the peninsula because it was in Austria basically, um, and in in the Hungary, so very close to Italy. Um, uh, I it's 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 completely impossible that the Byzantines didn't didn't even try some sort of agreement for. Um, for at least the eventuality that Longobards could settle into northern Italy. So in my opinion, and considering the fact that at a certain point the same Longobards were about to be wiped out by Byzantines and the Franks at the end of the 6th century, but they, and they, they, fa and then they, they made it to, to survive eventually, and at that point the imperial resources were ex completely exhausted and, and, and Italy was Longobard, even though, you know, major areas of, of, of Byzantine presence remained. Um, I think it's really plausible that the Longobards would be used in place of those resources where the Byzantines probably thought they would have managed to, to, to dispose of once Italy had been conquered in a less bloody way. Um, so, and, and just imagine, what, what if, the, if the Ostrogoths had remained instead? Mm, I don't know. As I said, I don't think the Ostrogothic kingdom was, in spite of its fortune from, from a cultural point of view, and still the fact that it was a functioning kingdom, uh, after all, it could be a sort of challenge, or at least a source of instability, or, or, or someone, other people could take advantage of that 
think that when the Byzantines took out the 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 Ostrogoths, the, the Franks, and the Alamans came into Italy as far as southern Italy, raiding and pillaging. So think how at how e uh, easy it would have been, for instance, for the Franks to progressively take parts of Italy from the Ostrogoths when they would have crumbled if the Byzantines hadn't been there. Um, so I don't really think that it was a strategical mistake to conquer Italy at least. Uh, as far f uh, for s as well for southern Spain that that actually shows that uh, that it was feasible to, to, to hold a small stripe of lands even if there were mm, other major um, Romano-Germanic kingdoms in, in inland, such as the Visigothic Kingdom in Spain. Maybe for Africa I agree on the fact that it, it was a mistake, but it's not that the Byzantines probably wasted such an enormous quantity of resources for there. But who knows? Consider, um, consider also that um, in this period um, the economical uh, situation was going down. We'll be seeing this better in a while. But it's also true that even a very small amount of troops um, could um, could make a difference in this scenario. You know, the resources were so few that even very large part of land could be conquered just for in a, in a small battle. If you think about the army that Belisarius led into Italy, it was a very uh, small, agile army. It wasn't such a huge army that had be had to be recruited. It were largely um, horsemen, uh, especially um, so it was a quite mobile force. There were also a lot of auxiliaries, which means uh, barbarian peoples that had sent troops there, even the same Longobards. And, and relatively to the Longobard settlement, just think that it seems that even before the Longobard invasion, there were sacks of Longobards that had, um, that had been veterans of the uh, Byzantine uh, campaign in Italy that had been settled in in southern Italy already even before the the other you know the, the big the people of the Longobards arrived as a wall in a mass into northern Italy so it's a very difficult uh, thing to to assess uh, instead I refuse completely the legend that has also very a very weak uh, historical root or or known or or at least a very or, or even almost non-existent about the fact that Narses, the, um, the, the Eunuchus <laughs> from Constantinople that had been sent to Italy to, to, to take command of imperial forces after Belisarius had been um, um, called um, back um, would have um, and, and that was disarmed as well at a certain point by Constantinople would have called for revenge against the empire the Longobards into Italy, so haha, yeah, I can't have Italy, so now the Longobards will have them. No, that's false, it seems, historically speaking. Also because Narcissus received um, sta um, uh, a funeral of state, and you don't make a, fu a state funeral in Constantinople for a guy that basically had make you made you lose um, a whole province for, for, for revenge, so that's also completely to refuse. Um, so, mm, I think that, I don't know much about the East, telling the truth. I think that, uh, I'm not so expert about what the Eastern situation was, but as far as I know, these wars against the Persians were extremely costly. So, even the idea of, n you know, having a peace that, that could be bought with money, um, wi with Persia, uh, wa wasn't a bad idea because when war with Persia broke out, a, a lot of resources were invested, and I would have not fought against Persia if I hadn't had a bit more of resources to fight it. And probably Justinian's um, plan plans or the ones of of his generals or aristocrats that that ultimately decided. Um, um, strategical, ma major strategical decisions of, of how to use imperial forces probably had seen it right in trying to recover the Mediterranean. And consider that uh, at that time, uh, as I was saying, in spite of decline, 
um, Mediterranean and late Roman society was still pretty much alive in the Mediterranean, so it wasn't mm, it wasn't wrong to think of reconquering them because there were lands that were fully re um, um, uh, could be fully reintegrated into the imperial system. Uh, for instance, we know from archaeological data that even parts of southern France in Provence that were some of the most intensely Romanized um, uh, areas of, of Gaul, historically speaking, uh, even though we don't have any um, actual historical evidence that the Byzantines reconquered them, um, um, it seems that they, uh, at a certain point after all these wars had finished, um, in some city on the coast there was um, uh, there, there were still um, coin minting with the imperial symbols. So th there were minting coins that were essentially the, the ones of the, the Romans that the emperor would he would make um, producing. Um, and this is also very important considering the, the sea perspective, the, the maritime perspective of this strategic plan. It wasn't much of re re reconquering interlands um, or, you know, even not even destroying kingdoms on their own because the Byzantines uh, surely didn't have the strength at that point to reconquer uh, the whole Iberian Peninsula or uh, or not even Gaul, because the Franks were especially were quite powerful at the time. But the idea is that managing to recover all the ports and therefore op having a, s a secure pathway of uh, European goods from the continent to the Mediterranean and therefore to Cons Constantinople um, interconnected with Asia, so keeping alive this this big trade, international trade, wasn't economically a bad idea. It wasn't a bad idea at all. So I don't really see how mm, there was really a delusional side in, 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 just, in Justinian uh, endeavors uh, and a force to, to, reconquer, to reconquer the West from, from this perspective. And, and especially I think that the major point in this analysis that we have to take into consideration, which, I don't know, is, is such a microscopic evident uh, factor in, in this system that was otherwise so, so fragile, was the plague. As we know, uh, in the myth of, of the, in the second half of the sixth century arrived this major mm, pandemic that, that basically, uh, I don't know, took out one-third of uh, Eurasian population, including the one in the Byzantine Empire, in Europe and everywhere. Um, the, the, Roman, uh, the Mediterranean world suffered enormously from this, from an economical point of view. Um, Italy especially was engulfed in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the Greek Gothic War, and it, it plus it suffered uh, this uh, plague. We have sources telling us that there were places that had become a desert in Italy where no one lived because, you know, everybody had died either of, of war or, or of illness. And, um, and we have this macro evidence of the fact that the Justinian's plague, as it's called, deeply, um, uh, deeply weakened the basis of the late Roman world and actually uh, accelerated the passage, the decline towards uh, what we call an early medieval society. We're talking about huge resources being lost. Um, this mm, plague wouldn't go away; it would mm, present itself until uh, until for for other two centuries. So it was a cyclical uh, event, even so, as it often happened um, in. In, in, in our history until the end of the 18th century, telling the truth. And, um, and, 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 and just imagining all these strategical plans that no one <laughs> could expect um, this major event to happen. So even the same Italian situation that could be, um, you know, how could you foresee that there would come a, a plague? that would destroy everything, it would deprive you of all the resources that you counted on to, to hold 
all those territories that you had reconquered before this plague even spread out and you had even you know you, you were planning to invade those lands i mean it's impossible so the fact that eventually a lot of peoples came that eroded the empire made it very smaller to to the one it was and the darkest hour in that s in, in this sense was the seventh century especially just after the the first wave of the of the the, the muslim invasions um i mean it doesn't hold as a as a critics you know um does it i mean it, it you you plan that everything goes well just imagine like today you know we we make plans thinking that our life our societies will grow in a certain measure that uh, the civilization would would progress in a certain way and uh, in spite of problems we would try to settle things then a huge pandemic arrives and I, I'm not wishing for it um, you can be sure but imagine it, it happened and you can't foresee that I mean you could foresee that theoretically but it's not a factor that you can take into consideration um, as many other risks that we have to to run in a certain way to make our civilization go goes on and it happens and then you criticize our society for not having thought about that well it's pretty pretty silly okay because in especially in those times you know what means you had to foresee such a disaster and how you could um could you you know um, deem the justinian um uh strategical think tankers <laughs> um to 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 be accountable for 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 not having thought about it while trying to reconquer uh the roman empire I don't think it's a uh, good critics. I think, on the contrary, that there was a probably even a, a, a much more sophisticated uh, strategical an analysis that we can imagine. Unfortunately, we know very few about these things. There are no sources for the ancient world to understand practically how strategic decision decisions were were taken. Um, we, especially from you know the the the, the the end of the, the principate but even during during it the, the we don't know how rome actually took decision to to wage wars we we, we have to base our uh, our mm, theories on how mm, the legions were deployed and other transformation in the roman military machine and i think that if we look at justinian's times we can't objectively find anything um objectively and undoubtedly wrong that had been done um, from their perspective. Today we know that history went in a certain way, <laughs> so we, we, we see that as, um, as, a major, as a major problem, but uh, uh, what, uh, what really was um, you know, the alternative at that time? Do you think you would be better than, than those people living that time? No, in, in, in managing an empire, mm, I don't really think so. <laughs> and as a historian, at least, I'm, I'm quite prudent to, 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 to say, okay, let, let's, let's at least um, admit that we don't know it and, and let's give these guys a chance since they knew their world much better than, than we do today. Um, so I think this was the the main point finally that I wanted to make um, there is a lot to 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 deepen um, about this topic I hope we I, I will surely talk about these um, these um, you know in detail about the expedition against the vandals the uh, the Greek codic war in other videos but for now I think it's enough so as always I hope you enjoyed my video I hope you mm, you have any question that you want to ask which you can do in the comments or in the email uh, if you like this video please share it otherwise leave a thumb up um, or talk about it with with, <laughs> with your friends like these these are things I, I read on the books when I was little at the end of the book just talk about it with your friends so y they can their their mummies and daddies can spend money to to <laughs> to buy uh, more of our books 
yeah, but uh, yeah, I think I'm not ashamed to say that I want to make this channel grow. I don't think it's a matter of um, it's a serious problem. I um, um, I like to to talk about history, and I like especially when um, when when a debate can be created about it. And therefore, I'm here making these videos. So I thank you once again very much for listening to me, and I wish you a nice day or night, wherever you are, and um, see you next time. Bye.